see that as you do the word, you will be blessed. Amen. At this time, you know, let's all stand to our feet. Let's honor and give God a praise for the mother of this house. Amen. Come on, give God a praise for the mother of this house. Amen. Amen. Give it up for our pastor. Amen. 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 I thank I thank God that he trusts me in the pulpit. Amen. He try. You should trust me. No. <laughs> Amen. You you may have your seat. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. This is an awesome day. I, I don't know about you, but it's an awesome day. And um, I was looking over the internet trying to find, you know, you're supposed to start off with some type of funny, cute story. I couldn't find any. None of them were funny. <laughs> and I thought, you know what, I'm going to share a few of my own. Because I've had five children, right? And um, they kept me in stitches most of the time after these e events were over. Um, one of my sons, I call him the Vaseline boy. He was about two years old, and uh, his crib was in our room. But he was an early potty trainer. So we took the side off of, off of the bed, and he would get up and go to the bathroom. And so... <laughs> One night, I, you know, as a mom, moms, we know when our kids get up. And so I knew he had gotten up, and I fell back to sleep, and then I realized that he had not come back. So I went to check on him. And here he was, naked, laying on a towel, covered from head to toe with Vaseline. And his eyes, he was just completely, I don't know what he thought, that in the middle of the night it was a good time to take care of that dry skin. <laughs> I had to literally run a hot bath just to get it off of him. And then there was my fashion designer. She didn't like the dress that I made her. Well, she did when I first did, but she got a little old and she didn't want to wear it. So she drew me a, a picture of the dress with instructions that said, cut off puff sleeves take off sash and place it here. <laughs> Cut off bottom two inches. <laughs> and then I have my eyebrow shaver. I received a note from my daughter one day. She's watching, she's probably ready to hit me, no. I, I received this note, and I still have these things. Moms, do you have any of these cute little notes your kids wrote you? Well, she wrote me this letter and she had a picture she said, before, and it had eyebrows, and then after, <laughs> there was no eyebrows. <laughs> and so I had to go in her room and say, okay, let me see what the damage is. And it took some time, but the eyebrows did grow back. But our kids, you know, they are an awesome responsibility, but we have to take time to enjoy those moments and those things that they did because it really is funny afterwards you know um, they enjoy talking about me the time I went off because one of them threw away a hot dog and I just I think it was just a moment <laughs> I was having and I was I just totally lost it I'm like I scrimp and I save and so they you know <clears throat> they like to do that one of mom losing it about a hot dog Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn to Exodus 2, 1, and 10. And then we're going to read Hebrews 11, 23. You want to write those down. And I'm going to... Um, Use one of Sister Nikki's custom and ask you to stand. She likes to stand to read the word. And so I want everyone to stand. And we're gonna I'm going to read this. And I'll read both of them. And then we will have our seats. Amen. Amen. About this time. Hmm? I'm going to read it. Yeah. 
about this time, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, about this time a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it in the reeds, among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him from the water. And then Hebrews 11:23. <clears throat> it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given him them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. Amen. You may have your seat. Father, we thank you for this time of gathering this morning, Lord God, this time that we've dedicated to you. Father, we thank you for the mothers that are here, the mothers that are listening, the mothers that have gone on before us. Father, we, we thank you for the legacies that mothers have left behind. Father, we just thank you right now that this word that you've put in our hearts, Father, that you will continue to write it in our spirit as we leave this place today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We've often um, heard the story of Moses. Um, if you were like me as a child, you know, it was a, a fun time. Every year we look forward to Moses uh, coming on TV. Uh, I know Sister Donna probably you remember that back then. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal. And um, us children afterwards would run around and act like we were Moses and we'd have our big sticks and make our robes, and I always love the part where it said, Moses, hold me in your arms. And, you know, that was my part. I loved it. <laughs> Super dramatic. But we didn't often hear about Yochebed. Yochebed. That was Moses' mother's name. She was um, an amazing woman. Moses had two mothers, one who gave birth and saw his potential and gave him up so that he might live, and he had one mother who rescued him, saw his potential, and kept him so that he might live. Both mothers were willing to go beyond the norm and defy the unjust mandate from a tyrant in order to see the child would fulfill the call that God had on his life. Now, I don't know if mother number two actually saw the potential or saw the, the calling, but there was something about Moses that mother number two would defy her father and raise a Hebrew child. But the mother who gave birth, the Bible said she saw that in the King James it says he was a beautiful child. And what this was saying was they, they recognized there was something different about this child. They had two already. They had Miriam and they had Aaron. But by the time Moses came on the scene, the tyrant has said that he no longer wanted the Israelites to keep producing in Egypt because they would overtake him. So out of his fear, first he decided that um, he would have these midwives to go in and to kill the children as they birthed them. But they saw, and they recognized and understood God, they had fear for God, and they refused to kill the he Hebrew children. 
And so when he brought them back to him and says, why have you defied me? They told him, well, the Hebrew women are strong women. They give birth before we even arrive. So he devised another plan and he said that, <clears throat> he told us, the soldiers to um, throw them in the river. Any male children that were birthed. So they would track, hold on one second. Okay. Um, he told them that when these um, babies were born, they tracked them, made sure if they knew you were pregnant, they were watching. And when, if it was a male child, that child was to be thrown into the river. But his parents, <clears throat> and in this case, his mother, saw that cute little Moses, but she saw more than a cute little Moses. She saw the future, that this one is going to be different. These mothers face obstacles. Yochebed, Moses' mother, his birth mother, hid him for three months. So she had had him. She kept him quiet. She didn't go out. She didn't get to show him off and share the news with his friends, her friends and family. All the joys of motherhood that we go through when we have a child, there was no baby shower. Everything was put on hold. Then she devised a plan to save her son's life. Her son would not be thrown into the water, but the water would become the answer. So she loved on him, swaddled him, fed him. I can see her rocking him to sleep and then placed him in this basket, this waterproof basket that she had made and placed him in the rivers that was known to have alligators rhinos and hippos, and then sent him in the direction of the palace. She gave Miriam the task of keeping watch and to be at the right place at the right time so that as Pharaoh's daughter retrieved the now awake baby boy from the bulrushes of the Nile River, Miriam stepped in to offer a solution to the hungry baby. Shall I fetch someone to nurse this baby? Yes, get someone. And who better than the child's own mother, Yochebed? She received her son back to raise while he was being nursed and got paid to do it. Look at God. <clears throat> When Moses had been weaned, she had to once again release him back to the tyrant's daughter so that his life would be preserved. We know the ending of this story, but let's pause a minute and let's talk about the lessons learned from Yochebed. Yochebed, her name, by the way, means um, Yahweh's glory, Yahweh's glory. She brought glory to Yahweh in her obedience. The first lesson that I found from Yochebed was that she was courageous. Hebrews 11 that we read said that she saw that God had given <clears throat> her an unusual or a beautiful child and yes, they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. I thought about that because oftentimes we, we don't have a problem with disobeying, you know, the laws of land if it doesn't suit us. But back then, if the, if the king said something, if the pharaoh said something, it was law. These women endured their children being murdered, but not Yochebed. She recognized that God had his hand on Moses, and Pharaoh's plan to destroy 
what God was putting together would not take place on her watch. It took courage to face the what ifs. As mothers, we face what ifs. But what if I do it and this happens? What if I let her go and this happens? And what if, what if? Courageous means to not, means not deterred by danger or pain. It means brave. My granddaughter, she always says, be brave, be brave. Nelson Mandela once said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man, woman in this case, is not she who does not feel afraid, but she who conquers that fear. What a lesson for us to take away. We too can be courageous in our decisions for our families and the things that we do with them. Um, I, I remember there's been a many a times where I've had to make a decision and walk in the face of that what if, you know, and not allow the fear to overtake me, but to overtake fear. The second lesson, uh, Jochebed was an ordinary woman who prayed and obeyed. She was just like us. She loved her children. She wanted the best for them. But when obstacles came up, she did what she had to do. And then she prayed and asked Jehovah, and he obeyed, and she obeyed the direction that he gave her. You do what you have to do, but you have to pray. And then obey. And that's where that courage came in, because what she had to obey God after she prayed, she couldn't do it. Just like Abraham, when God said, sacrifice your son. He had to pray, but then he obeyed. If you are here today, which you are, <laughs> somebody prayed for you. Amen. Amen. How many can agree that a mother prayed for you? Amen. Your mother, your grandmother, your auntie, somebody prayed for you, and that's why you're here today. Amen. It made all the difference. I know it made all the difference in my life to know my mother pray for me. Um, one time I was at home. I went, I went home and <laughs> my mother, she was, I mean, she, you knew my mother prayed. But she had this bulletin board. And if your name was on that board, you must have done some really stuff. <laughs> so I came home one day and my name was on the top of that board on the prayer list. I'm like, what are you praying for me for? Like, I ain't did nothing wrong. <laughs> but my mom, she prayed. In Yochebed, she was a prayer. Check this out. When we were raising our children, there were no cell phones, no internet, no social media. So when we had problems and we were thousands of miles away from home, uh, if we had some money and we had long distance, because you had to pay to call somebody in a different city, different state. You had to pay money, and it wasn't cheap. So when I had, when I had problems, when I had you know, things going on with my kids, I couldn't send a text. I couldn't even pick up the phone. I'd send a letter, by the time she'd get it, the prayer was answered. <laughs> But today, everything is different, and we're at somewhat of a little disadvantage today because we very quickly will just text, post, 
everything. And then when all else fails, nobody we could get no answer, you know, no the answer that we wanted, that is. Then maybe we'll pray. But Jochebed, Jochebed, she prayed for her children. And she reminds us that we have to take it to God. We can't carry it. And sometimes it is way too heavy. We can't carry that except to the Lord. He listens and he will answer because he's, he's always, always ready. And he always has a plan. The third lesson I learned from Yochebed was trusting God. She trusted God. She trusted him enough to let go. She didn't let her mind win. I mean, who puts a baby in a basket and puts him in a river with alligators and snakes? Only the one who trusts God and lets go. I mean, who sends their child to the home of the tyrant that wants to kill all of the males like him? Only one who would trust God and lets go. We all have our obstacles to overcome as parents, whether our children are small or whether they're grown, because sometimes the grown ones whew, can really wear out your knees. <laughs> Man, we have some obstacles. But those are the times that we have to let go. We have to trust that God knows. We have to trust him that he's, he's going to work it out. Even though if it works out and it's not what we thought, his plan being ultimate. Yeah, I'm still shaking my head at the older ones. <laughs> but I tell you what, I learned. I learned. I had one of my children I was praying for one night. Woke up. And I learned very young, I learned from my mom that if you, you wake up, there's a reason. And she always said, you know, if you're troubled in your spirit, just pray. <clears throat> and I prayed. I was praying. And then I got a call the next day and said, were you praying for me? Said, yeah, about 3 o'clock. And they were in a situation, and that situation dissolved. Could have went a whole nother way. But it was the prayers and heaven heard. Now, our situation may not be as drastic as yoga beds, but to us, those times are drastic. You know, it, we feel like it's drastic. We feel like it's God's got to do something or I'm out of here. There's decisions that we have to make to, with our kids, and sometimes we need we need to let go and trust God. We have to let go. The next, number four, what I learned about Yochebed was that she made use of her time. She only had Moses for, at max, four years. So it could have been anywhere from two to four years. So during that time, she was sowing seeds. She was planting seeds about God. He, Moses was learning to pray. He was learning about God and how to love him, how to love God. She wasted no time because she knew eventually she would have to let go again. And then he would be schooled in the Egyptian way, worshiping gods, other gods. I sometimes wonder what difference it would make to us if we knew we only had this window. She knew how much time she had. She knew. We don't. And I wonder if, if we knew how much time would we be more diligent 
and utilizing the time that God has given us with our children. She sows seeds of faith and was a blessing to her son. And it lasted, and we know that because later on, though he went, strayed away from the teaching because he was being taught something else, he came back. Sorry. <clears throat> Lastly, Jochebed took the mission to, of being a mother, the mission of motherhood. She took it seriously. She had no idea what God was planning for her little Moses, but she took the role of motherhood very seriously. And throughout the history, we see teachers and godly leaders who were... <clears throat> We see that the first teachers of godly leaders were not theologians. They were mothers. Mothers taught them. The mother's teaching. And I'm saying, yes, fathers teach. Today's Mother's Day. When you think about the different people like, wow, that's a great man. Well, I want to be like that when I grow up, or I want to be like her. I idolize that. I, that's the way I want to be. And you ask them, well, who taught you first? Mom? My mother? Mothers mold and shape character into their children. Mothers, you have been inducted into generations of people with the same mission to mold and shape character into our children. This is our mission. This is our call to take motherhood seriously. I want to share two more scriptures with you before I close this morning. One is Hebrews 13 and 8. And I want to say the title of this message today is My Mother Saved My Life. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Ephesians 5 and 1 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. So the title my mother saved my life. I'm sure you've deduced that the title was about Moses and Jochebed. It is somewhat. But more so, the title refers to my own mother. My own mom. Like Jochebed saved Moses, my mother saved my life. By being courageous, Praying, obeying, by trusting God, by making use of her time, and by taking her mission seriously. She walked out that word that I just read, Ephesians 5 and 1. She became an imitator of Christ. And like Christ, she is the same yesterday, today, and I always say, for in infinity and beyond. If you, you've met my mother, some of you have met my mother, and she's always the same. She's the same mom that I remember when I was young. I can always remember her singing praises to God. I remember her teaching and the, her love for the Bible. Um, my mom is still the same today. My mom has tablets and tablets of prayers that she was praying for different ones. She probably prayed for you. Because whenever you say, pray for me for this, mom, mom would say, any prayer requests? And I would give her the prayer request. She's praying for you. She's praying for our, our children and our grandchildren. 
And I even have a great grandson, little Mayel. She prays for him. She's the real deal. And she saved my life. Like Moses, I went through some difficult moments myself. And uh, even to a point at some, some times of wanting to take my own life. I had thoughts like Moses did. Moses took his thoughts into action. I did not. But I still had murder in my heart and in my mind. But my mother was praying for me. Through those difficult moments. I can look back now and see where her prayers and her guidance, her scripture that she had me memorize. Um, my mom wasted no time. She would have us on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoons and evenings. We weren't like the other kids. She was courageous. She made decisions, and then that's the way it went. And on Sunday afternoons, we weren't allowed to run around and play and get dirty and climb trees and climb the mountains. We could do all that during the week. But on Sunday, you're going to sit, you're going to get your bath, get your clothes changed, you're going to sit on the porch. She would read us stories from the Bible. We had those blue books. Anyone else have the blue books? We had the blue books. And she would read the Bible stories to us. And then she would quiz us. And then we had memory verses that we had to memorize. And when we sat down for supper, we sat down together as a family. That was training time. And she would, we would each have to say our blessing, which was a scripture from the Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We would go all the way around the table. Even a little baby had to say, Jesus wept or they wouldn't get their plate. Serious. She was serious. Because, you know, babies can get, when they get to that, that point, and you say, say Jesus wept. Mm. Say Jesus wept. Mm. <laughs> You're like, okay, you ain't going to get no food. You're going to thank God for it, you don't get it. And eventually, you do wet. All right, here's your plate. These things that my mom sewed in me, helped me to go in a different direction. I would have went somewhere else. I could have been someone else. Could have married someone else. Man, that would have messed me up. <laughs> we affect the lives of our children. We're going to do that one way or the other. but we can be like these two mothers and take it seriously and lay the foundation for our children so that they could go the way God has planned. I was talking to a few of my, my nephew one day and I had, I've had my nephews and some of my nieces really challenge myself and my my siblings and you know they like to say well you're only a Christian because of your parents you're just trying to be like them that's all you know that's why you're a Christian and I used to argue that point with them you know you're wrong you know this this is that. I used to take offense <laughs> but I no longer argue the point I concede I am who I am because of my parents. I am who I am because of my mother. And because she was, she is the same yesterday, today, and for infinity. Because she is an imitator of Christ. She's the person who loved me first, who taught me the word, and who has always shown me Jesus and even through the things that she was going through herself, she still remained the same, steadfast, unmovable. 
in this generation, we contribute that to her being a strong black woman as though it is a superpower. But my mom's real superpower was Ephesians 5 and 1. And because of that, like Jochebed, my mother saved my life. And I wasn't long, was I? I pray that something I said this morning has piqued your heart. We have an awesome task as mothers. And everyone else, you have an awesome task to support your mother, your wife, your daughter, those who are raising children. It's so important. Every mother is important. Whether single mom, whether your mom is here or gone, whether you're a god mom, Sharia, whether you have adopted, and I've known grandmothers who have raised their children's children. It's an awesome responsibility. Let us stand. I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray for those mothers who feel I want to save my children. I want to save their life. I want to be that mother who prays and obeys. I want to be the mother who's going to take it seriously. I want to be one of those mothers. And I need God to help me with that. I want to pray for you if that's you. Amen. I want to pray for those who today, maybe your mother's not here. Maybe she's already gone on. And you're in a struggle because what do you do? But you still celebrate your mom and the legacy that she's left, and you do it by the way you live. But I want to pray for you. And then I, this one is really important. As wonderful as my mother is, my mother is not perfect. She never was perfect. And I say that because none of our mothers were perfect. But sometimes there are ex we have expectations uh, of people and they're unable to, to be that for us. And we find ourselves with unforgiveness in our heart. And so I want to pray with you that God will help you walk through forgiveness to forgive your mom, to release your mom. And then I want to pray for you if you are that mother who maybe you weren't walking with God and you made a lot of bad decisions that messed things up. And your biggest problem is forgiving you. Forgiving yourself. I want to pray for you today. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father, we just thank you. For you are an almighty God. 
Father, we thank you for that mother right now who wants to be the one that will save the life of our children by the way she walks, by being a mother who prays and obeys, by being a mother who takes it seriously, who makes use of the time, Father, we just pray right now that you will just continue to quicken their heart on a daily basis to see how awesome this responsibility is that you have trusted us with these children that will raise up, will be raised up, and will be pleasing to you, God, because they will walk in faith and victory. Father, those who have lost their mothers, they truly haven't lost their mothers. Their mothers have gone on. But, Father, the whole is still there because mothers are such a great influence on our lives. So we just pray right now that you will continue to walk them through the time of celebration and to celebrate the legacy that was left behind by the way we live today. And Father, we pray for those who need to walk through the forgiveness. Father, forgive us for holding that grudge. Father, forgive us for holding that thing against our, our mothers. Father, forgive us. Release it right now in Jesus' name. We release the hold that the enemy has kept in our life. The foot in the door that has kept the enemy just coming to and fro. Right now we come against that spirit of unforgiveness that will permeate and go throughout our family for generations and generations. We cut it off right now in the name of Jesus. It stops here in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray for those that need to forgive themselves. Father, you've already died for it. You've already bled for it. You've already suffered for it. So, Father, right now, we let it go. We let it go. You have forgiven, so we forgive ourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, where we need to be forgiven. And set us free by your power and your love. And we thank you, Lord God, for the victory that's going to be done. The victory that's going to be done. We thank you for the victory, God. In every home that's represented here, we praise you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you're redeeming the time. That thing that has already been done has already been done. But now, Lord God, you're covered by your blood. And we thank you that you're going to, to give back. Give back that which was lost. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Wasn't that a powerful word? Joke about it. Thank God for Pastor Debbie, mother, delivering a powerful word. Hallelujah. Let's just wait in his presence just a little bit. Spirit, you, you sent your word. 